Good morning, Donna Town. It's good to see you this morning. Good morning, Donna. Good morning. As you all say in the South, we are fixing to start. Um, I'm glad you're all here today. Thank you for being here. Um, you may have heard the rumors, and they are, um, they are true. We are starting some um, reservation only back to in person worship. We tested it last Sunday with our best year. They did a fantastic job. As you know, the bishop had to approve our plan to come back to in person worship. And, Nancy Moke and her group put together a fantastic uh, methodology on how we would do that following all the protocols of the diocese and the CDC. Now, we will not stop Zooming, um, but we are going to need to purchase some rather expensive Zooming equipment, some, some video equipment, uh, and some microphones. Uh, we're going to be able to use our lapel mics like we did in the past. But we want to get all of the technology out of the way, and that's the plan eventually. So that when you come back in, um, the cameras and the lighting and everything else will be hidden from your view. So um, if anybody wins a lot of please send some money to us. Uh, there are several Sundays yet available to donate for flowers. We need money for our flower ministry, so please donate um, much and often. Um, watch for more notices in the Canterbury Tale. If you'd like to honor someone, um, please call the church office. And even if somebody already has that date, uh, we can have more than one person honored or one thing to be thankful for uh, for that Sunday, especially if it's a Sunday where we can have special meaning to you. Uh, I want to send out a really big thank you to the gardening team led by our very own Linda Sig and her husband Ray. Um, the garden looks fantastic, as, as you all know. Um, Bob died, and um, we had a gaping hole in our garden, and we had a whole group of people that had to step up and, and fill his awfully big gardening shoes. So uh, we had Richard Lewis, Donald Tom, Ellen Matthews, Emily Fields, Peggy Boyd, Bob Moke, and Ray Sig all volunteer to help with the garden, and it looks fantastic. Um, and then finally, I would like to say that we are within $500 of being able to help um, with the tuition assistance for our AU uh, graduate who is finishing up his degree. He's not a graduate yet. He's finishing up his degree. Um, and I'm very grateful for all the outlook of support uh, that everyone is given by donating money. You know, if everybody gets a little too bad, we can do an awful lot. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, thank you all for contributing to that. Um, and now let us prepare ourselves for worship. Quiet our minds of God and gladden our hearts. But as we come together to worship you this day, we may be open to your Holy Spirit and find that this space is the very day of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you so kindled the flame of holy love in the heart of blessed Catherine of Siena, as she meditated on the passion of your Son, our Savior, that she devoted her life to the poor and the sick, and so to the peace and unity of the church. Grant that we also may share in the mystery of Christ's death and rejoice in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from the third chapter of Lamentations. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. 
she advised things, and then she followed her own particular mystic path. At the age of six, she had a remarkable vision that probably decided her entire life's vacation. She was walking home from a visit, we're not told where, and she stopped on the road and she gazed upward, oblivious to anything that was going on around her. And she said, I beheld our Lord, seated in glory with St. Peter, St. Paul, and St. John. And then she went on like to say that the Savior smiled upon her and blessed her. And from then on, Catherine spent most of her time in prayer and meditation despite her mother's attempts to force her to be like a pearl to even try to get her married off. But Catherine, she chose to close herself off from all worldly things. And she stayed in a darkened room and she fasted and she slept on the hard wooden floor. She was eventually accepted as a Dominican postulant. And later in 1363, she was made a tertiary of this order. I talked about that in the morning prayer this morning. She was made a tertiary, meaning that she was made a member of the order and took simple vows. And yet she was still allowed to live outside of the walls of the convent. Frequently she felt abandoned by the Lord, but in 1366, Jesus appeared to her accompanied with Mary and Matthew Post, and he espoused herself to him. And her virginity fully became a sacrament. She became later a nurse, as most Dominicans regularly do, caring for patients with leprosy and with cancer. Those whom other nurses refused to really break with this life through. Her courageous work continued when she served others during the bubonic plague that swept through Europe, killing about 20 million people. And you know, she never thought about abandoning her cause. She visited prisoners who were condemned to death and constantly called upon to arbitrate views and to prepare troubled sinners for confession. Well, eventually, her ministry moved beyond her local community. She began to travel to, to help with promote church reform. And it was during the great schism of the papacy when we had two popes, one in Rome and one in Avignon. Catherine wrote tirelessly, worked tirelessly. She wrote princes and kings and popes trying to restore the unity of the church. I think her greatest, well, I can't say it's her greatest, but contribution, but she wrote something called The Dialogue, which is a compilation of her writings about her mystical experiences, and it's about her dialogue between God and her soul, she said. And when she was finally exhausted and paralyzed, she died at the age of 33. Her last words reveal her faithfulness in God. Into your hands I command my soul and my spirit. You know, Catherine, she knew great suffering, the suffering of others and of herself. She not only suffered physically, but mentally from the persecution of others who were envious of her gifts, who didn't understand her gifts, and also were envious of her devotion to God. Among other things, her enemies accused her of being insane. But luckily, a church court investigated those charges and they dismissed. The gossip kept this dark cloud surrounding her and any didn't quite know what to do with Catherine and Sienna. But Catherine, she did not focus on earthly suffering or earthly rewards or earthly things. She knew that God was with her through all that she undertook. And her faith taught her that all things work for good for those who love God. Her faith taught her that all things work for good for those who love God. I repeated that because it seems pretty difficult for people to understand. There was an assistant pastor in Wilson, Georgia, when I was there, and he posted on his Facebook page that God brings us hardship so that we will rely on Him. Yeah. Yeah. Wilson's Facebook page. And when I found out, I think we both came to the same conclusion, the same place, just from different places. But I can't think God causes suffering. Now, does suffering happen? Absolutely. Does God make it so? I don't think so. We have free will, though, 
in all of that. We rely on God's unmoving love for us to get us through, or we can choose to suffer alone. That is where we both agree. Through her own suffering, her sacrifice, her mystical experiences, Catherine came to that same conclusion. She believed that God could bring good out of misfortune. In her dialogue on Providence, St. Catherine addresses those who are scandalized and rebel against what is happening to them, but it's time to get to work and this is what she said to them. Everything comes from love. All is ordained for the salvation of man. God does nothing without his goal in mind. And for that, I say, Amen. Amen. And now, in the spirit of uh, Catherine Saint of Siena, let us name for God those for whom we offer our prayers. O God of compassion, giver of life and health. We pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken. Relieve their pain and restore to them the gifts of gladness and strength. Grant to all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for others for whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work in farms and fields and cities, city streets and factories that put them in danger with the little pay. And Lord, we ask you to watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them from all danger. Keep them safe in the knowledge that it's through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community ends from others. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God, of all comfort, and our only help in time of need, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Father, your will for all people is help and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit. You make our bodies the temple of your presence. We, we praise, praise you and you. thank you, O oh Lord. O oh, Eternity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O oh Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace for all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear grace, us, O oh Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent. Grant to them a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear Pray. us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships. Restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear Pray. us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, yes. O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and the Holy Spirit, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, yes. O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives and our nation and in the world. Hear yes. us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the people. You, O oh Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O oh Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you made us in your image and called us to be the body of Christ. We are not under your image in one another. 
We have not loved others as you have loved us. Forgive us our sin of not seeing you in each other. This pandemic has highlighted the racial disparities in our communities. The violence for people of color and Asian descent has sickened us. Now give us strength to stand up and work with all the strength we possess to bring racial justice in our church and in our community. Give us the will to do your will in this work. In the name of Jesus, who always stood with people who were oppressed, even when it cost him his life. Amen. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and forgive us. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done. In thy love we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, bow to that. He now and ever more your defense. And may you know and feel that the only name of the heaven given for help and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now it's our custom is that we now let Father Lord next to you uh, lay hands on our own body. And at the proper time, we sign our forehead with the sign of the cross. We offer ourselves, our souls, and bodies in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to sustain us with his presence, to drive away all sickness of body and spirit, and to give you that victory of life and peace, which will enable you to serve him both now and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. Our brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace. And now I'd just like to say a, a public service announcement or a parish service announcement, however you want to say that, the PSA either way. Um, during the preparation for communion today, we will have silence. Um, we will be doing this during Easter time on first persons so that we can pray for those folks that need our prayers. So please pray for yourself, pray for one another, pray for your family. Pray for your clergy. Pray, pray for the diocese of Georgia and other dioceses. Pray for uh, our governor and all those in authority. Spend some time also praying um, for all those in India and Brazil who are, are getting a double whammy out of the COVID-19 and such that we have not seen in our lifetime. So I invite you into moments of very important prayer this morning as we prepare the altar. Amen.
the prayer book. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this bread to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. From your goodness, we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It'll become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in the word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death we, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection. We, we await his, his coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our praise, sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you gracious God to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Augustine of Canterbury, Bridget of Kildare, David of Wales, and Catherine of Siena, and all your saints, that we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. But Christ, the cup of salvation. Now, I invite all those who are unable to receive the consecrated bread and wine this day, but who long for the grace and blessing of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ, to join me in this prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are truly present in the, in the blessed sacrament of, of the altar. altar. I, I love you above, above all things and long for you in my soul. soul. Since, Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now let us say the post-communion prayer. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you. So guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, and God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thank you everybody for being here today. We're grateful for you. And now um, we invite you to come again tonight for Compline tomorrow morning for morning prayer. And of course, three o'clock today, we have our communion pickup from three to four today and tomorrow. So please come by and get your little bit of Jesus. Go in peace. <laughs>